St. Mary's Pirates are on the field. As we'll get to the Bee Digger starting lineup here. Projects such as the farm. Momentarily. All right. Bee Digger starting lineup. Brought to you by Equitable Savings and Loan. Proud to be Northeast Colorado's locally owned hometown savings and loan. With locations in Fort Morgan, Sterling, and Brush. Available 24-7 for your banking needs. That's Equitable Savings Alone. We are on KSIR and KSIR.com. We did not have any interruption in um, the signal or service, despite what I was being told here. Anyway, all right, the Bee Diggers starting lineup here for head coach Kevin Fergus. Goes like this, batting first is the center fielder Justin Griffith. The pitcher Jaron Peterson at second. Batting third is the left fielder Ryan Fergus. The cleanup hitters, the shortstop Trent Mount. Batting fifth, Caleb Cox. Who's the second baseman, the DH, Ben Brown at six. Ryan Dunker, the first baseman, bat seventh. Third baseman, Gunnar Guzman at eighth. And Colin Cole, the catcher, bats ninth. Matt Haynes at first for St. Mary. Seth Chambliss at second. The third baseman is Michael Ott. At short is Gavin Sturdivant. And left is Josh White. The center fielder is Ryan Combs. Tyler Richter and right. And the first pitch is a fastball in the inner half for a strike. Thigh high from the right-hander Jacob Brummel. Behind the plate is T.J. English. And this game is underway at 114. And the pitch and the breaking ball is up a strike. Well, it's a delayed call. One, no balls and two strikes. Griffith hitting with an open stance from the left side. Here's the wine and offering. And that fastball is high. Griffith with a 361 average going in. And Brummel's already bringing some heat early here. The wine and offering. And the breaking ball is popped up into shallow left field. There'll be a convergence there of two players. And a left fielder lunges and makes the catch. Josh White, to his knees, was able to put it away for the first out. As he called off the shortstop Sturdivant, that'll bring up Jaron Peterson. Peterson hitting 277 out of the two hole. Jacob Brummel 4 and 2 with a 2.23 ERA. And the right hander delivers. And the breaking ball is a strike on the inner half bell tie. It's 0 and 1. On a gorgeous afternoon here in Lafayette with an open stance for the right side. And the offering. Fastball way outside. Count levels at 1 and 1. Full day of baseball on KSIO. We'll have the Rockies and Dodgers third of a four-game set at 6.05. And the pitch. Swing and a miss. Looked like a little changeup down and in. Ball one, strike two here to Peterson with one down to the bases empty in the first. English lays down the sign. And the pitch. Swing and a miss, and it gets by the catcher. English, Peterson headed to first, and he is going to be in there. He'll be safe. That'll be a pass ball. On the strikeout of Peterson. Simply a drop third strike there. And there's Ryan Fergus. So the Bee Diggers catch a break there. Fergus hitting 328. And English not happy with himself. He knew he should have caught that on the fly here. So the Bee Diggers have a base runner without the benefit of the ball being put in play. But they'll take it. They've struggled to score runs this year. Fergie hitting 328. Second on the team with 11 RBIs. And Coach Fergus knows his team's going to have to be a little bit creative. Play some small ball. As Jade Queen will be the courtesy runner at first for the pitcher, Peterson. All right, Brummel looks in. Here's the stretch. Short lead at first, maybe a step. And the pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball just below the letters at 0 1. Here to Fergie. He likes those pitches up in the zone, but with this pitcher, he's got a nice fastball. And Brummel also on, a, on that high mound. It's a pretty high mound here in Lafayette. Short lead the pitch. And that is on the outside corner with a fastball for a strike at the knees. Oh, that was the definition of a pitcher's pitch right on the corner. No balls and two strikes. Only two balls thrown so far by Brummel over the first ten pitches. One step lead once again for Queen. And a step off throw to first. And 
Just trying to keep him honest over there, but Jay's got a lot of speed. But he'll probably need a bigger advantage in order to take off here. No balls and two strikes to the B-digger left fielder, the senior Ryan Fergus. The stretch by Bromo at the belt and the pitch. Swung on line to right field for a base hit on an 0-2. And no play will be made to first despite the fact that ball was hit hard to third is Queen. And he's going to be tagged out. I don't know why he went. I mean, there was no way he was going to make that. I was surprised he took off for third. That's a, wow, that's a huge base running mistake there. But if he was sent, and he has thrown out by Richter, and Michael Ott applied the tag. Yeah, I cannot believe he took off there. Ott was playing shallow. But you pick up your third base coach, and the B-Diggers are being aggressive, but that was way too aggressive there in the opening inning. And here is Trent Mount hitting 333. He's driven in 22. And with your cleanup hitter coming up. Here's a stretch, a two step lead at first for Fergus. And the offering. And that's upstairs. Took something off at one ball and no strikes. So, first and second one out situation is now a man at first with two down as the B Diggers picked up their first hit of the inning. Trent Mount with an open stance. And the 1-0. And that breaking ball is a strike. Bell ties. One ball and one strike. Make Stubbs Gas and Oil your next stop heading out of town. You can gas up your vehicle, sit down to lunch, get snacks and your hunting and fishing licenses. Find everything you need at low prices. Stubbs Gas and Oil and Wiggins. And by the way, Queen was out by a mile. It was not a close play at third. Throwback to first back and diving is Fergus. One ball, one strike, one on and two down here in the first inning. The winner to play peak to peak, which defeated Platte Valley 6-2. to two. Two-step lead for Fergus. Throw back the first again, closer play, but Fergie back in diving. Mount again at some point, he'll see the 1-1 pitch here coming up for Brummel. Here's the stretch by the right-hander. And the offering. Swung on and popped foul. And out of play off to the right. One ball and two strikes. Yeah, when Fergie hit the ball, I thought that Ott might try to throw to first because he was charging hard on that one. But it was clear Fergus was going to make it. But that's why I got caught by surprise. There was a play at third. Throw back to first and... Or that it, the base runner was taking off for third. There was an easy play, obviously. So here we go. One ball and two strikes. Mount from the right side awaits the pitch here from Brummel. And here it is. Swing and a miss and a fastball down in the zone. And the beat diggers are done here. In the top of the first inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. We head to the bottom of the first in this 3A district semifinal. The B Diggers do not score, and St. Mary's is coming to bat on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Here's the St. Mary's lineup batting first is the shortstop, Gavin Sturdivant. The DH, Sasha Obermeyer, hits second. Batting third is the pitcher, Jacob Brummel. The cleanup hitter is the catcher, TJ English. Batting fifth, the left fielder, Josh White. Matt Haynes, the first baseman, at sixth. Michael Ott in right is batting seventh for St. Mary's. Batting eighth is the second baseman, Seth Chambliss, or Titer Richter, excuse me, is the right fielder. I kept saying Ott. It was Titer Richter who made the play in right field, so my correction there. And Ryan Combs, the center fielder, is batting ninth. The Bay Diggers defensively have Ryan Dunker at first, Caleb Cox at second. The third baseman is Gunnar Guzman. Trent Mount is at short around the outfield. Ryan Fergus is in left. Justin Griffith in center. The right fielder is Carson Rule. Colin Coles behind the plate. And Jaron Peterson, who's yet to lose this season, 3 0 with a 1.99 ERA, will be on the mound for Brush. Here's Gavin Sturdivant. Right handed hitter. Batting 328. Peterson operates out of the stretch with the bases empty. And the pitch. 
Swung on. That ball is grounded right side. Cox to his right has got it on that third hop. Throws to first for the out. And that's what the Bee Diggers need. They've been up and down defensively. Caleb Cox with a nice play to his right. And there's one down at the bottom of the first inning. And that'll send up Sasha Obermeyer. Obermeyer batting 321. They've got five players with double-digit RBIs this year, and Obermeyer's hitting for the left side. Peterson out of the stretch, and the offering. That fastball's on the outside corner at the knees for a strike. No balls in one strike. He's got that sharp breaking ball as well. Obermeyer awaits the pitch. And the offering. Swung on and chopped to short. Mount's going to back up. He's got it on a big hop. Low throws low to first. And Dunker cannot come up with a baseball. It skips by him. That'll be an error on Mount on the low throw. And it took just two batters for the beat diggers to make a miscue there. And now, I don't think the ball went into the dugout. The umpires are converging. Are they going to give Obermeyer a bag? I don't think so. Anyway, stepping in will be Jacob Brummel. Yeah, it was going to be a close play, but a good throw, I think, has got him. Brummel's hitting 446. Man, he's been tearing it up. Brummel is the leading hitter for this team. 13 RBIs. Two-step lead at first for Obermeyer. The stretch. Peterson delivers. And that is a little bit low with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Brush had a hit in the top of the first. Did not score. Again, a two-step advantage for Obermeyer. Peterson likes to take a long pause and a pitch. Swung on and grounded up the middle. The shortstop mount has, he bobbles the ball, but then I think he fell on the bag for the force. He's having some issues out there. Almost tripping over himself to his left, but he was able to get the force. He'll take it for the out. And Trent's got to just settle down a bit. That was nearly a double play grounder, but hey, he made the play, which is what counts at this point. And there's two down. Here's TJ English. English hitting 333. Another right handed hitter. It's a big lead out there for Brummel. Three step lead. Stretched by Peterson. Peterson delivers. Swung on. That is grounded towards short. Mount has got it. Underhands to second for the force. And that'll do it here for St. Mary's. Very limited pitch count there for Jaron Peterson in the opening frame. He threw just eight pitches. No runs, no hits. One error and a man left. Let's head to the second. In Lafayette in the State District semifinal. It's brush nothing. St. Mary's nothing. On 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the second inning. A grounder to Trent Mount on a fielder's choice end at the bottom of the first. And to begin the... Whoa. All right. What are you doing to me, Rose? All right, here's Caleb Cox to begin the second. Uh, Cox, Brown, and Dunker against Jacob Brummel. Caleb Cox with a productive season, hitting 283. As he steps in against the right-hander. Here's the wine and pitch. And that is on the outside corner with a fastball for a strike just above the knees. It's 0-1. Again, the winner to take on peak-to-peak, -peak, which eliminated Platte Valley 6-2 in game one. English lays down the sign and the offering. Swung on and chopped up the right side towards the first baseman, Haynes, who steps in the bag for the outs, and there's one down. One down for Ben Brown, batting 341. Brown sat at a couple of games with a shoulder injury. Fastballs off the glove of English. One ball and no strikes. And the third postseason meeting between Brush and St. Mary's in the last four years. St. Mary's won in the district semifinal in 2014. The B-Diggers won in 2015. 
in the district championship game. 1-0 pitch. Swang and a miss and a fastball. Challenged him down the middle at the knees. It's 1-1. One one. AC Ice proudly supports local high school sports throughout northeast Colorado. You can find it at any local grocery or convenience store near you. Swung on and fouled off to the right and a ball diving down in the zone. It is one and two here to Ben Brown. And on B106 and B106.com, Fort Morgan will take on the winner of the Palisade Evergreen game after Fort Morgan defeated Pueblo East earlier today, 9-4. to four. Mustang Slater to play at 3 o'clock. Swing and a miss. Pulled the string on that changeup up in the zone. And there's two down. Ryan Dunker steps in for the V-Diggers. But two down and the base is empty. Pitch from Brummel. Swung on and popped up foul. Out of play on the right side. It's 0-1. Yeah, this figures to be a pitcher's duel. And the B-Diggers have got to figure out a way to make contact. They've struck out three times already against this right-hander. The pitch swung on that has popped up down the right side into foul territory. Matt Haynes, the first baseman, has a play behind the B-Digger dugout. Makes the catch. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Jacob Brummel. We head to the bottom of the second after the one-minute break in this 3A semifinal. Brush nothing. St. Mary's nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. No score between Brush and St. Mary's. Let's head to the bottom of the second inning. Jaron Peterson needed just six, not eight pitches, six pitches to get out of the first. And he faced four hitters, so St. Mary's is going up there very aggressively. The Pirates in the second will send up the five, six, and seven hitters. Josh White, Matt Haynes, and Michael Lott. White with an open stance. Right-handed hitter for St. Mary's. Colin Cole lays down the sign, and the first pitch of uh, the bottom of the second inning from Jaron Peterson is swung on and fouled off to the right. One with a blazing fastball. That's as late a swing as you can take. Nearly went into the digger dugout. No balls and one strike. Wide hitting 474. He's actually the leading hitter outside of Brummel. A stretch. And the offering. Swung on and foul to the backstop. Count goes to 0-2, and, and Peterson's all over the strike zone, as is Brummel in the early going. And the later the game gets, so you can look at it one of two ways. One way to look at it is the underdog might have an edge. The other way to look at it is last at bats, which St. Mary's going to have, could have the edge, but we're still early in the game. And the 0-2. And that bender's down and in. One ball and two strikes. Here to Josh White. Peterson stretches. And Peterson delivers. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Tried to jam him. Another late swing. Remains at one and two. The double elimination state tournament. The A-team double elimination will begin on Friday. It's been held in Greeley for years and uh, other locations as well. But Greeley being the main site. And the offering. Swung on and tapped foul up the third base side. So the count remains at one and two. This will be the sixth pitch of the plate appearance here to White. He threw six pitches to four batters, Peterson did, in the bottom of the first inning. Try a breakfast bowl or delicious breakfast burrito at Willow Coffee and Bake Shop. Open six days a week, 921 Edison Street in Brush. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out. The base is empty. Bottom two, no score between Brush and St. Mary's and Lafayette. And the pitch swung on. Hit slowly on the ground on the left side. Charging his mound. He gloves. He throws to first, and that's offline. It'll be a base hit. Yeah, good throw might have had him, but he had to throw on the run. That's a base hit there for Josh White. Tough play there for T-Money. 
And that'll bring up Matt Haynes. Haynes for St. Mary's. Comes into the game batting 314. We haven't had really a hard hit ball yet by either side except Ryan Fergus's base hit to right field. That was the only really hard hit ball. Two step lead at first. By White the stretch. And Peterson delivers. Fastball is inside. One ball and no strikes. As I mentioned, Peterson has yet to lose. This year, 3-0 and with a 1-9-9 ERA. And Trent Mount, the shortstop, has got a 1-1-3 ERA right behind him if the B-Diggers could get past St. Mary's. Peterson delivers. And that is just a little bit low. 2-0. and Took something off of that one. Peterson thought he had the strike zone there. Two and zero to Matt Haynes. St. Mary's attempting to pose a threat here in the bottom of the second inning. And Peterson delivers, and that's inside. Try to throw him a breaking ball there. It's three and zero. On deck is Michael Ott. Three balls and no strikes. Now you have to assume that Haynes will be taking on this pitch with a short lead at first. Peterson comes home. That's a strike. On the outer half, thigh high, it's three and one. Three balls and one strike. Short lead again for White, about a step and a half. Throw back to first and back in diving is White. The B-Diggers actually had two on in a row. Well, it would have been two on, but they had a base runner thrown out of third in the first. And that stopped that momentum. 3-1 pitch. That's right down the middle for a strike at the knees. 3-2 and two to Matt Haynes. Let's see if Peterson can come up with a big pitch here. This is the number six hitter in the Pirates lineup. The stretch. Long pause by Peterson and the pitch. Runner goes, it's outside, it's a walk. So the first two have reached for the Pirates at the bottom of the second inning. One with a fastball there, here's Michael Ott. Ott is hitting 290. Chambliss behind him, 250. So the question is, do you try to play some small ball here and lay down a bunt? And then rely on your eight and nine hitters to try and drive them home. Let's see what Michael Lott does here. Peterson looks back. Squaring a bunt, and he pops it up the left side. Peterson dives, and he makes the catch. Now he's going to throw back to second, and it's a double play. Peterson to his right along the line. Was able to make a diving catch and doubled up as Josh White. And there's two down. Oh, that's a that's a definition of an athletic pitcher right there. A big time double play. And there's two down. Caleb Cox was covering over there. Here's Seth Chambliss. Well, that changes this inning altogether. The stretch. And the offering. Swag. And a miss. Went with a fastball down the middle belt high. It's 0-1. And that also preserves the pitch count a little bit. Stretch by Peterson. Short lead at first. And the offering. That's right down the middle for a strike with a fastball. It's 0-2. Here to Seth Chambliss, the number eight hitter for St. Mary's. Scoreless game on the bottom of the second. Peterson stretches. And the pitch. Down and in. Ball one, strike two. 
nice breeze coming in as well. On a warm day like this, I'm sure people appreciate that. Peterson stretches again. Chambliss awaits the pitch. Here it is. Swung on and fouled to the backstop. Challenged him with a fastball. It remains at one and two. And I'm sure Peterson's thinking, I can get this guy and I can start with a nine hitter in the third. One ball, two strikes, two outs. Peterson shakes off a sign, accepts the second. And delivers. Swung on and fisted right back to the mound on the ground and a lob to first for Peterson. And he throws out Chambliss and St. Mary's is done in the bottom of the second. No runs, one hit, no airs, and a man left. We head to the third. Brush nothing, St. Mary's nothing in this 3A district semifinal from Lafayette on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Gunnar Guzman, Colin Cole, and Justin Griffith for the Bee Diggers as we head to the third. No score. And Lafayette against the right-hander Jacob Rummel who has registered three strikeouts over the first two innings. As he steps in here. Gunnar Guzman from the right side. Nice free swinger. The pitch swung on and fouled off to the right. Try to tie him up there. No balls and one strike to the B-Digger third baseman, a junior. And the offering. Swung on line. Base hit into right field by Guzman. Taking that pitch the other way. And that's the B-Digger's second hit of the game. Shorten up that stroke nicely. And Guzman only hit 128 during the regular season. But he's had some good swings. He's also hit into some bad luck. But hey. This is when it counts the postseason. Colin Cole hitting 268. Now let's see, let's see the Bee Diggers play any small ball here. Knowing that Griffith is coming up right after him and then Peterson. No score in the third. The stretch by Brummel. One step lead for Guzman. Step off. The Bee Diggers had 12 stolen bases over the first two games and really didn't run much later on, eh? The clamps were put on the running game quite a bit. And the pitch swung on and popped foul and out of play off to the right as Cole was tied up on that one. 0-1 here to Colin Cole. B-Diggers have two hits so far. St. Mary's with one. And Jacob Brommel has thrown 22 strikes and four balls. So the B-Diggers got to be up there swinging big time. The stretch. And the offering. Fastball is high. Gano's level at one ball, one strike. Again, only the fifth ball thrown over the first 27 pitches by Jacob Brummel. And Guzman barely has a lead. He could almost take one step and be back on the bag. And the 1-1. And the breaking ball is a strike on the outside corner. That might be the best hook that Brummel's thrown so far. One ball and two strikes. With a man on. And nobody out in the top of the third. And Guzman needs a bigger lead than that. I mean, he's almost... <laughs> he's almost on top of the bag, even though Brummel threw over there. He's essentially... I mean, it's a baby step away from the bag. And now, he's got a little bit more. Colin Cole waits the one-two pitch throw back to first. Well, he's trying to keep him close, even though Gunner's lead is not a big one. And that might also be an indication that Brummel's got a very good move and the B-Diggers don't want to take a chance. The stretch. Colin Cole awaits, and that's off the glove of English, and Guzman to second off the pass ball. That pitch was tailing inside so the B diggers have a runner in scoring position St. Mary's at first and second with nobody out in the bottom of the second did not score 
A bunt double play followed by another out and the pitch. And that breaking ball is down and in. Three balls and two strikes to the junior catcher, Colin Cole. Big pitch coming up here for both sides. Guzman's got a healthy lead at second. And the 3-2. And that is on the outside corner with a fastball called strike three. And it's strikeout number four for Jacob Brummel. And there's one down. Here's Justin Griffith. Man, that was spotted perfectly. I think if Collins swung, he couldn't have done much with that pitch. I mean, that was a pitcher strike. Heck of a pitch. Stretch by Brummel with one out. Griffith from the left side. A step off by Brummel. He gets a sign from English. And Brummel looks in, looks back, and the pitch swung on and fouled off to the left. Try to go inside with that pitch. No balls and one strike. Find out why Morgan Community College is one of the best choices, if not the best for your higher education. Visit MCC online at morgancc.edu. No balls and one strike with one out and one on. No score in the top of the third with Brush and St. Mary's and Lafayette. And the offering swung on and foul tipped off of English. 0-2 took something off of that. And Justin tried to pull it, but Brummel's bringing, he's bringing some heat here. No balls and two strikes to the B-Digger center fielder. A junior at second base, a junior at the plate. Brummel at the belt. And the pitch swung on and grounded sharply to short on two big hops. The throw to first is going to be just in time. Advancing to third is Guzman as Sturdivant makes the play. Griffith got down that line, but he was retired. Here's Jaron Peterson who reached via the drop third strike trying to help his own cause. And Brummel out of the windup with a man at third and two down. Here's the widened pitch. Fastball down and away. Nice backhand is stopped there by English. There's not a ton of space between the plate and the backstop. I'm guessing about 20-some-odd uh, feet. The pitch outside. 2-0. and oh. With Fergus on deck. Brummel has thrown 36 pitches through two and two-thirds. Here's the wine and offering. Swing and a miss. On a pitch down and in, it's two and one. And he didn't go straight fastball that time. He wanted to make sure that uh, he had Peterson a little bit off balance. The pitch and the curveball is upstairs. Three and one. To Jaron Peterson, a 277 hitter coming into the game. And Brummel delivers, and that's down and in. It's a walk to Peterson. That'll give Fergus a chance to hit. And for Brummel, that's his first walk. Fergie had a base hit to right. Jade Queen will be running. But Queen was thrown out at third on a base hit by this hitter, Ryan Fergus. So first and third with two down in the third. The stretch and the offering swung on and popped down the right side. Haynes, the first baseman, gives chase. And he did he catch it? He did. Haynes caught it off the top of the fence behind the beat digger dugout as it was headed out of play. An outstanding play there by Matt Haynes. And the bead diggers are retired in the third inning. Boy, another inch, and that would have been out of play, but Haynes made the play. No runs, one hit, no errors. 
And two men left. To the bottom of the third we go. Brush nothing. St. Mary's nothing. On 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. The Bee Diggers had a shot there with first and third and two down, but Matt Haynes, the first baseman, made a play right off the top of the fence on a fly ball into foul territory. And still no score. It'll be the 9-1-2 and two hitters against Jaron Peterson. Ryan Combs, Gavin Sturdivant, and Sasha Obermeyer. Hitting out of the nine hole. Once again is Combs from the right side. Pitched by Peterson. Swing and a miss and a fastball in the inside corner. It's 0-1. Combs hitting 306, so... Darn good average for a number nine hole hitter. And the offering. Swung on and fouled off to the right. Challenged him with a fastball up in the zone. No balls and two strikes. No runs on two hits for Brush. No runs on one hit for St. Mary's. The bait diggers have stranded three and St. Mary's has left two on base. No balls, two strikes. The pitch. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. Combs strikes others out number one here in the third. That'll bring up Gavin Sturdivant. And for Peterson, that's his first strikeout. Yeah, the peak to peak Platte Valley again. That was one nothing for a while in favor of Platte Valley before peak to peak had a four run inning and one six to two. Peterson delivers, and that curveball is in the dirt. One ball and no strikes. Now this is the perfect weather for postseason baseball. Don't always get this. Last year was very overcast, and Englewood all over the state, really. 1-0. Swing, and a miss, and a fastball up and in. Count is level at 1-1. One and one. Here to Sturdivant. Cole lays down the sign. And the offering. And that bounces into Cole. Two balls and one strike. You need your vehicle and farm equipment to be in top shape, so make sure you take care of them by purchasing the best quality parts at great prices at your local Napa store, Central Auto Parts in Fort Morgan. Two balls and one strike. One out. The base is empty in the third. No score. And the pitch. And that is down and in. Three and one. Tried to spot that pitch and barely missed. Now Peterson's got to come in with one. Here with the base is empty. And Sasha Obermeyer on deck. The stretch. And the offering. And that's down and in. Try to throw him. Look like a changeup. And it's a walk. The second walk issued by Peterson as Sturdivant reaches. Here's Obermeyer. He reached on an air his first time up. Well, neither team has attempted a steal yet. And you would think your leadoff hitter in the lineup like Sturdivant's got some speed. A two-step lead over there. Peterson stretches. Long pause. And the pitch. Swung on and chopped foul up the right side. No balls and one strike. Groceries, fresh cut meat, deli items, floral, pharmacy, Western Union. They've got it all. Public service payments, 24-hour gas. Your one-stop shop is Brush Grocery Cart. 1302 West Edison Street and Brush. That's the Brush Grocery bro, Brush Grocery Cart. Easy for me to say. No balls and one strike with one out and one on. <laughs> Easy for me to shop though because they got everything. The pitch up and away with a heater. Count is level at one ball and one strike. Here to Sasha Obermeyer. Who is a DH here for the St. Mary's Pirates? Two-step lead. Sturdivant looks like he wants to go. 
throw back to first and back at diving is turd event. All right, Peterson settles back in on the rubber. The stretch and the pitch way outside. Two and one. Big pitch coming up here for Peterson. With a man at first and one down in the bottom of the third. Long pause. 2 1. Popped up foul down the left side. John moves to 2 and 2. Here to Obermeyer with Brummel on deck. Got to get this guy because you got a big stick coming up after Obermeyer. Two balls, two strikes, one on, one out. No score in the bottom of the third inning. The Bay Diggers are double play depth. Runner goes way outside. There's going to be a throw, but that's going to be late. Easy stolen base for Sturdivant. Not a good pitch there for Cole to be able to nail the runner because... One, he had a great jump, and two, it was outside. He had to stab it to his left. So it's three balls and two strikes. Peterson looking to make a money pitch here. One Patriot League team already has been eliminated in Platte Valley. The Beat Diggers trying to avoid being the second. 3-2. Swung on line foul off the end of the bat over the St. Mary's dugout on the third base side. Remains at three and two. Sturdivant off of second. Peterson. Comes home. Swing and a miss and a ball down and away. He swung at ball four undoubtedly. That pitch dove out of the zone, but Obermeyer went fishing for it. And it's strikeout number two, both in this inning here for Peterson. Here is Brummel, who hit into a fielder's choice his first time up. Stretch by Peterson. And the offering, and the curveball is down and in. One ball and no strikes. With a man at second and two down. Brummel awaits the pitch. Long pause. And here it is. Swing and a miss. Man, he reared back and threw that fastball. Down the middle right by Brummel. It's one and one. Just past the top of the hour. You are listening to 1010 KSIR. Brush, Fort Morgan, Weldona. We're also on the web at KSIR.com. In this 3A district semifinal, I'm John Beltran from Lafayette. And Peterson ready as he looks back. And the 1-1 pitch. And, ooh, that went behind him. Wow, Peterson lost control of that one. Nice job of Brummel getting out of the way. 2-1. and one. Not sure if he tried to unleash a breaking ball that didn't break at all. 2-1 to Brummel. There's a big gap on the right side. The bee diggers are leaving exposed over there. Peterson comes home. Swing and a miss and a fastball tailing away. It's two and two. He's got that fastball working so far. Looking to strike out the side here in the third. Yeah, he might think twice about not even throwing a breaking ball here. Rommel swung and missed twice at fastballs. A stretch. Two two. And did he go on that breaking ball? And apparently he held up. Yep, he held up. Three balls and two strikes. Peterson had him thinking, though. So here we go. This will be a payoff pitch. 3-2. Swung on and grounded. Foul down the third base side. Boy, just foul. Did challenge him with that fastball, but it got the heart of the plate.
So we'll do another 3-2 pitch. Peterson has thrown 45 pitches through two and two-thirds. So both of these pitchers have been extended a bit. Jacob Rummel so far with 40 pitches through three. So they're at around the same area. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the stretch. Peterson delivers. Swung on and foul back. Went with a hook there. Remains at three and two. Yeah, Peterson's a bulldog out there. He can give you all seven. But he's going to have to economize here because his pitch count is getting up there. Approaching 50 pitches, not even through the third yet for Peterson. So Brummel will see another 3-2 pitch. With a man at second, two down in the third and no score. Cole lays down the sign. And a 3-2. Fastball is inside and Brummel walks. First and second. With two down for TJ English. English grounded a short to end the first. Peterson has issued three walks in the game. That's why his pitch count is up there. He's thrown a lot more strikes than balls, but he's been extended by some of these St. Mary's hitters. A stretch and the offering. Fastball's a strike, belt high. It's 0-1 on the outer half. Here to English. Off of second of Sturdivant. Rummel at first with two down in the third. Peterson looks back. Peterson delivers. And that one got him. Boy, try to jam him with a fastball, and it got him around the left shoulder. And now the bases are loaded for Josh White, who hit an infield single his first time up. In fact, at St. Mary's only hit. Well, the game can certainly change right here. The B-Diggers can reestablish some momentum if Peterson can retire White. A lot of this damage done with two out. It's really not damage, just a walk and a hit batsman. Sturdivant was out at second there with one out. Stretched by Peterson. And the pitch. That fastball's up and in. Boy, hopefully Peterson's not questioning himself right now. 30 strikes and 20 balls. That strike to ball ratio is getting a little bit tighter. With the bases loaded, the stretch. And the offering. And that's low. 2-0. And oh. yeah, Peterson all of a sudden has lost it. This happened to Trent Mount against Resurrection Christian about a week and a half ago. He was throwing strikes, and all of a sudden he couldn't find the strike zone. Then he walked in a, a cougar, and then things fell apart from there for Brush. Two balls and no strikes. Peterson pitches squaring to bunt, and the fastball is inside. That was just a decoy, but apparently White did not pull the bat back. 3-0. and oh. oh boy, you hate for the, any run to be scored like this in a playoff game. Peterson now has to come in with three in a row. Well, at least two in a row. The stretch. And the 3-0 pitch. Inside, it's a walk to White. Sturdivan scores and St. Mary's leads one to nothing. And he really wasn't close on any pitch except one. And here comes Kevin Fergus. Conversation now with Peterson. With a man at second and two down, Peterson walked Brummel with the bases loaded, hit TJ English, or hit Brummel on a 3-2 pitch. Uh, that's, he walked Brum on a 3-2, hit TJ English, and then just walked White with the bases loaded. So that's the correct explanation there. Matt Haynes walked his first time up. A 
Coach Fergus is keeping everything the same, but what has to change right now is Peterson's pitching. Four walks for Jaron Peterson. And looking to reverse his fate right now. St. Mary's has scored a run without a hit in the inning. It's all been free passes. The stretch. Matt Haynes awaits. And the pitch. Fastball inside. That nearly clipped him. One ball and no strikes. Well, that's at least... I think that's about six or seven balls Peterson has thrown in a row. Well, if he doesn't get this guy out, Peterson could be pulled, which is crazy considering how well he was pitching until he just lost it. 1-0. Foul to the backstop on a fastball in the inside corner. Count is level at one ball to one strike to Matt Haynes. Stretch by Peterson. And the offering. Fastball is a little bit outside. What, I guess. Two and one. Man, that looked pretty good from here. Two balls and one strike. Looked like he got the zone, but calling that a ball. The stretch. And the offering. And the curveball's in the dirt. Three and one. Three balls and one strike to Matt Haynes. Pitching was the strength of this team. And now starting pitching is in trouble here with Peterson. He just walked a man with the bases loaded. Haynes awaits the 3-1. And the offering. Swung on and grounded. Foul down the first baseline. That missed by about a foot. That would have been at least two runs, if not a third. Three and two to Haynes. Peterson's got to make a huge pitch right now. Boy, the base is loaded and two down in the bottom of the third. Maybe the worst inning Peterson has thrown all year. It's just been a struggle. Three balls and two strikes. And the pitch. Swung on and grounded right side. Caleb Cox has got it. Sets throws to first for the out. And the B-Diggers get out of that jam with minimal damage. One run on no hits, no errors, and the bases were left loaded. St. Mary's was given a run there as Peterson really struggled, but he got through the inning with just a little bit of damage. Let's head to the fourth. St. Mary's won. Brush nothing on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. St. Mary's won. Brush nothing. So we head to the fourth inning. And for the beat diggers in this frame, they'll be sending up the four, five, and six hitters, Trent Mount, who struck out Caleb Cox and Ben Brown. A bases loaded walk to Josh White is responsible for the game's only run. Here's Trent Mount. Trent Mount is the hitter. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Here's the wind by Brummel and the pitch. And the check swing on the breaking ball in the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, he didn't swing on that one. No, he held up easily. Brummel with his 41st pitch he just delivered. Here's the wind and offering. And that's a fastball for a strike on the outer half thigh high. It's one and one. Bank your financial needs with the Logan County Home Dome Bank since 1917. First National Bank and Fleming swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Count at one and two to T-Money. 
Mount with a 333 average going in. We've hit the one hour mark in this game. And the pitch. Fastball is outside. Two and two to the opening hitter for the Bee Diggers in the fourth inning. And the pitch. Curveball is swung on foul up the third base side towards the St. Mary's dugout. Remains at two balls and two strikes. Bee Diggers have played a load of close games this year. I think they might be the only team in the state to have a 1-0 victory and a 1-0 loss. And the pitch. Curveball is up and in. Moves to 3-2 and two for Trent Mount. Wine by Brummel and the pitch. Up and in with a fastball and Mount walks. So the Bee Diggers, who've already stranded three, have a man on to lead off the fourth. Here's Caleb Cox, who grounded the first in the second. And again, what will the Bee Diggers do? Since scoring runs has been a challenge for Brush this year, they might try to go with some small ball just to move them over. But Cox is a very good gap hitter as well. Mount with a two-step lead at first. The stretch and the pitch. Swung on and chopped towards second. Charging a high hop to throw to second. It's going to be late. Late. Mount is in there. Chambliss two to second. And it's beaten now. We'll call that a fielder's choice. No base hit there. Just a fielder's choice. And first and second. And here is Ben Brown as Mount really got down from at 90 feet from first to second, made that cl close, and he was able to beat that throw there from Chambliss to Sturtevan. Now here's Ben Brown. He struck out his first time up. Again, no base hit, just a fielder's choice. But it gets the job done. Nice job by Cox hitting the ball on the right side. First and second. This is the best threat the Bee Diggers have had in the entire game. The stretch with nobody out, that is. And the offering, and he takes it a little bit low. Took something off of that, one ball and no strikes. Coming up will be pitch number 50 for Jacob Brummel. one nothing St. Mary's in the fourth. They are the home team in this game from Lafayette. Peak to peak won the first game, 6-2 to two over Platte Valley. And the 1-0, swung on and fouled to the backstop. On a fastball up at the letters, one ball and one strike. Both of these schools have played a lot of winning baseball in recent years. A lot of winning baseball. The Bee Diggers need two victories today to advance to the state tournament for the fifth time since 2009. One ball, one strike. At second is Mount. At first is Cox with nobody out in the fourth. Pista Brown. Swing and a miss. Right down the middle. Took a big hack. Belt high, it's one and two. One ball and two strikes. Brown awaits the offering. Fastball is high. Well, the one thing they're doing is they're working this pitch count. 12 pitches thrown by Brummel in this inning without an out. Two and two to Ben Brown. Runners take their leads. And the offering down and away with a fastball, three and two. Wow, this one pitch will make a huge difference in the inning. A monumental difference in the frame. Three balls, two strikes. Brown awaits the pitch. That is down and away. It's a walk to Brown, and the Bee Diggers have loaded the bases here for Ryan Dunker on a walk of fielder's choice and another walk. So Brummel suffering 
from some of the same stuff that Peterson had in the bottom of the third where he lost control. Now all of a sudden both pitchers have struggled to find the strike zone here. Conversation on the hill. Dunker popped the first his first time up but he's up there now in a much different situation with the bases loaded and nobody out of the top of the fourth inning and the bee diggers trailing by a one to nothing score and let's see if brummel operates out of the stretch here peterson has walked four in the game brummel with these two walks in this frame is walk three. So Dunker steps in. The stretch. And the offering. Swung on and grounded to short. Sturdivant's going to feel on a big hop to second. And the ball is off the glove of the second baseman. Chambliss into right field. Cox is also going to score. The third is Brown. We'll call it an RBI and an error on the throw by Sturdivant. And the bead diggers now lead two to one in the fourth inning. And again, just putting the ball in play was huge there for Dunker. So again, he gets one RBI. The second one scores on the air. Here's Gunnar Guzman. He had a base hit his first time up. Still nobody out here in the top of the fourth inning as the Bay Diggers have taken the lead. And still, Brush does not have a hit in this inning. But they have put two balls in play on the ground. The stretch, pitch to Guzman. Breaking ball, swung on and missed. Boy, terrible hack at that. He thought that was a fastball down the middle. And he had he couldn't hit that with eight, 18 bats. No balls and one strike. Guzman looking for that fastball, but Bromwell remembers what he threw him when he got that base hit. Bay Diggers need that third run across with nobody out. Pitch to Gunner, runner goes, and a swung on and grounded slowly on the right side. A huge chopper up the first base line. Throw to first in time. Brown scores. Nice job of Gunner putting it in play on a very high chopper on the right side. And it's now 3-1. to one. Give Guzman the RBI. He shortened up the swing and just chopped it in there. And the Diggers have another in scoring position. Colin Cole struck out looking his first time up. And again, the Bee Diggers, just like St. Mary's, getting on the board without the benefit of a hit. The stretch. And Cole calls time. Serving area bean growers since 1921, Trinidad Benham. 970-522-3595 for all your dry bean needs. Proud supporters of Northeast Colorado Sports. The stretch. Cole awaits the pitch. And that is down and in on the changeup. One ball and no strikes. Brummel needed 40 pitches over the first three innings. This will be the 19th pitch of the fourth. And the offering. That's low. 2-0. Two balls and no strikes. Let's see if Cole's going to take one on the 2-0. And he swings and chops it over the mound. The shortstop Sturdivant charges to his left field. Throws on the run. And in time as Cole is retired. Advancing to third is Dunker. Two out RBI opportunity for Justin Griffith who popped out and grounded out. Here's the wine and pitch and the curveball is on the outside corner for a strike. Or maybe the outside corners. Wine and offering. Swing and a miss. Boy, that fastball wasn't even close to the strike zone. That was at neck level. I don't know why Justin swung at that one. 0-2. Oh 
Brummel getting back into a rhythm. Line and pitch. Swung on and fouled on the breaking ball. Foul to the screen. No balls, two strikes, two outs, a man at third, three across for Brush in the top of the fourth inning. And the pitch. Curveball is swung on and fouled off and out of play to the left. Griffith just battling here. Down in the count at 0 2. Here's the wine and offering. Swung on and grounded sharply to short. Sturdivant has got it sets. Throws to first. High and offline. Griffith is safe. Dunker scores on the second air of the inning by Sturdivant. And the Bee Diggers now lead 4 to 1 in the fourth inning. And again, the Bee Diggers, without the benefit of a hit, have scored four runs. Here's Peterson. Struck out and walked. Peterson is the eighth hitter of the inning for Brush. And the pitch runner goes. Swung on and driven into the right center field gap. And that ball is going to take a couple of hops all the way towards the fence. Around third is Griffith. He will score. Peterson is headed for third. He's going to be in there with a two-out RBI triple. And the Bee Diggers now lead 5-1. to one. All the runs scored in this fourth inning. Finally, the Bee Diggers have a hit in this frame. And here is Fergus and Jade Queen will run for Jaron Peterson. Fergus is singled and popped out. So here's Jade Queen at third with Ryan Fergus at the plate. Wine and pitch. And that is a strike. Took something off it on the outer half. Belt high, it's 0-1. Fergus awaits the offering, and here it is. Curveball is grounded slowly to third and played off the body there. Bob picks it up, throws to first, and that's going to be late. Queen scores another error there. And the Pirates are coming unraveled here in this frame, and the Bee Diggers now lead 6-1. to one. Here's Trent Mount, who struck out and walked. Mount is 0 for 1. And the Pirates have made three critical errors in this fourth inning, allowing the Bee Diggers now to put together a six run frame to stretch. Pitch the T Money. Swing and a miss on a bender down and away. It's 0 and 1. This will be pitch number 30 of the inning for Brummel, number 70 of the game, coming up to Trent Mount. Two-step lead for Fergus at first. And the pitch, and that's in the dirt, and it skips away. Taking off for second is Fergus to throw the slide, and he's going to be out. Yep, didn't get far enough away from him, and Fergus is thrown out at second. As the tag was applied by Sturdivant. The beat diggers in the inning score six runs and only one hit. Three errors and the bases were left empty. To the bottom of the fourth we go. Brush six, St. Mary's one in this 3A district semifinal on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the bottom of the fourth inning. This game has turned around completely as St. Mary's was up one nothing, But then the Bee Diggers put together a six-run frame. They got a lot of help. Their only hit was a Jaron Peterson RBI triple. And with a couple of walks from Brummel and the three errors committed by St. Mary's, the Bay Diggers took full advantage and now lead by five, six to one. Michael Ott, Seth Chambliss, and Ryan Combs, seven, eight, and nine. Even though Peterson has struggled at times with his control, he's allowed only one hit. So when he's in, and that was an infield hit. No hits allowed by Peterson in the outfield. Here's a stretch with the base is empty. And the pitch swung on and popped foul and out of play. 
Now, Ott was up there in a critical situation earlier. First and second, nobody out, and he bunted. And it was caught by Peterson, and then he doubled up the lead runner at second. Stretch by Peterson. That was in the second. And the 0-1. Fastball is outside. One ball and one strike. Peterson stretches. And the pitch. And the curveball went behind him. Two and he doesn't have that breaking ball working like he did when he went the distance against Eaton. Really struggled with that breaking ball today. But the fastball's been working. Two balls and one strike to Michael Lott. On the bottom of the fourth inning, Brush leads St. Mary 6-1. to one. And the pitch. Oh, down and in. Come on, Jaron. Three balls and one strike. The stretch by Peterson. And the offering. Whew, way outside. In fact, it went to the screen. Fifth walk by Peterson. Oh, he's going to need some relief at some point because he's thrown 64 pitches and his strike to ball ratio is not good anymore. 34 strikes and 30 balls. In fact, in that third inning, he threw 19 balls and 16 strikes. Here's Seth Chambliss who grounded back to the mound. Peterson threw just six pitches in the opening frame. Stretch. And the offering. Fastball is high. One ball and no strikes. And you'd like for him to get through five. Get through five, and then if you got to bring Mount or Dunker or Ferguson. Although I think Mount would start the second game. The pitch. There's a fastball for a strike down the middle. One ball and one strike. Peterson had a big RBI triple in that six-run fourth inning. Short lead for Ott at first. Chambliss awaiting the pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss and a ball up and in. One and two. With Ryan Combs on deck. Peterson has two strikeouts, both in the third. Again, a short lead, and the offering up and in with a fastball. It's two and two. But again, the big concern right now is the pitch count, even for Brummel as well. Two balls and two strikes. The pitch. Swung on a tap foul up the third base side over the St. Mary's dugout. Of the six runs allowed by Brown, only two were earned. So he's certainly done his job here. Two balls, two strikes to Chambliss, the number eight hitter. Come on, Peterson, let's see if he can put him away on this pitch. Here it is. Curveball is lined up the middle on one hop. Mount Dove! And it's a base hit into center field. I think he could have waited on it for one hop. But instead, he decided to dive for it and really couldn't come up with it. I'm not sure he should have waited on that one. Just to get the sure out at second on the ball fisted out there on the looper. So first and second, there's Ryan Combs. My team money's had a big time struggle out there. So has Sturdivant for St. Mary's. But again, neither of these teams was very good defensively this year. The Bee Diggers had 46 errors and St. Mary's at 42. Combs struck out his first time up. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball nearly hit him. He said it did, but well, the umpire's not going to give it to him. 1-0. Oh. Six to one brush, but St. Mary's is trying to come back here. A walk and a base hit that could have been at least one out. And a check swing foul to the screen. And Peterson got a break there. That thing was neck level. One ball and one strike. Oh, 
All right, frustrations definitely on the St. Mary's side. They thought they could have even held brush without a run in the fourth. But the Bee Diggers don't want to give them anything here in the bottom half. One and one. And Peterson delivers. Swung on and fouled to the screen. Went with a fastball down the middle. One and two. Peterson has had two A starts this year. A to A plus against Resurrection Christian and Eaton. This is more like a C right now. One ball and two strikes. Pitch to Combs. And that ball hit him in the back with a fastball. Jeez. Wow. And the bases are loaded. For Gavin Sturdivant who's grounded out and walked. Oh, that C just went to a C minus. That's two hit batsmen and five walks for a pitcher. And Peterson has been very good. We will have a pitching change. Looks like Ryan Fergus will come in to pitch for Brush. And St. Mary's has the bases loaded with nobody out in the bottom of the fourth inning. And Ryan Fergus will be the new pitcher. Let's take a two-minute break. Brush six, St. Mary's one. In the bottom of the fourth inning on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. All right, Ryan Fergus is the new pitcher with the bases loaded. A walk, a hit, and a hit batsman have loaded the bases. The pitch, that's a fastball for a strike on the outer half thigh high. Sturdivant is grounded out to second and walked. So he's 0 for 1. Ryan Fergus might have the closest thing out over four innings. The pitch upstairs took something off, and it's 1-1. One and one. Fergus has had his issues this year with walks. Let's hope today is not one of them. At third is Ott, Chambliss at second, Combs at first. Down and away, off the glove of Cole, but no advance. Two and one. Again, not a ton of space between the catcher and the backstop. Maybe, I'm guessing, at a 20-foot range. Two balls and one strike. St. Mary's has already stranded five in the game. Pitching was the strength of the beat diggers, but... Not the pitching today. Swing and a miss on the changeup up in the zone. And it's two and two. Let's go, Gavin. Way to pull the string on that. Let's see if Fergus can throw the out pitch here to Gavin Sturdivant. And the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and popped up into foul territory on the right side. Dunker gives chase. And he makes the catch right in front of the beat digger dugout. And there's one down. One down here for Sasha Obermeyer, who has reached on an air and struck out swinging. And the Bee Diggers just looking to get outs here. Still plenty of baseball left with a 6-1 to one brush lead in the bottom of the fourth inning. Over St. Mary's here in Lafayette. And the pitch swung on. That is popped up in a shallow left field. The shortstop mount goes out. Still back in. And it drops. And it's going to be picked up over there by Peterson. Throw to third to Guzman. And they can't get the force as the ball gets by. And a run scores. Oh, that was terrible. Oh, we'll score a base hit. But that is awful defense by the bead diggers. Wow. Six to two. No, we'll give him, but, I mean, Guzman was there at third. The throw was low, though. They would have had the force. We'll still give him a hit. There was no guarantee. Here's Jacob Brummel. Reached in a fielder's choice and walked. I mean, Fergus has done his job, but that's such a makeable play. I don't know. Peterson saw it well off the bat, the pitch. That's a fastball for a strike on the outside corner. It's 0-1. This game has gotten very sloppy on both sides here. Wine in the pitch. Swing and a miss and a fastball above the letters. It's 0-2. Yeah, Mount was backpedaling. I think he would have went right after the ball. He makes the catch standing up, but Peterson was playing deep, and they still couldn't get it. 0-2 pitch. Breaking ball is up and in. Yeah, that could have been scored in there, but we'll call it a base hit since it landed in the outfield, and the throw is going to be a long one. 1-2. One and two. And the offering, 
Swung on and fouled to the backstop on a fastball up in the zone. Boy, if Rush can get through this inning with at least a two or three run lead, they'll be happy. It's a four run lead right now. Bramo is the tying run at the plate. One ball, two strikes, one out, one in. And the pitch up and away with a fastball, two and two. Well, one thing is for sure, if either of these teams is going to advance to the state tournament, the winner of this game has got to play better all the way around against Peak to Peak. And the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and popped foul and out of play behind the backstop. This is where Brush's depth in the starting rotation is helping out. Two balls and two strikes to Brummel. B Diggers at double play depth. Wind by Fergus in the pitch. And that is down and in. Just missed with a changeup. Three and two. This already now has the makings of a long game. It was a one nothing game through three. Pay off pitch in the dirt. Chambliss scores. Brummel with a bases loaded walk at six to three. Here's TJ English, raised on a fielder's choice and was hit by a pitch. St. Mary's is two across in the inning with a couple of base hits, but both base hits could have could have been fielded. Mount took a dive over at short in a ball that I think he could have backed up and played on one hop and four, flipped a second for a force and then some a fly ball that landed between Mount and the left fielder Peterson. The fastball's a strike on the outer half thigh high. It's 0-1. Like I said, if Brush can get out of this with at least a two-run lead, they'll be happy. And the offering in the dirt, scooped up by Cole. Count levels at one and one. Well, it's a playoff game, but this is anything but playoff baseball. There's no question about that. 1-1 one, one pitch, swung on and popped foul and out of playoff to the right. One ball and two strikes. At third is Combs. Obermeyer at second. Bromo at first. Fergus shakes off the sign and the offering. Fastball is upstairs. Two and two. Fergus has already thrown 18 pitches. The offering, that nearly hit him. Took something off at three and two. Three balls and two strikes. The wine and the pitch. Ball four, it's high. That's the third bases loaded walk issue to St. Mary's. Obermeyer scores at six to four. God forgive me, this is unwatchable. Let's head to the top of the fifth inning. Brush six, St. Mary's four in this district semifinal. Jacob Brummel still out there for St. Mary's. The brush starter, Jaron Peterson, was removed from the hill after he really struggled with his control, walking five in the game. Brummel has thrown 70 pitches so far. Trent Mount struck out and walked he was at the plate when Fergus was tagged out at second closed the book on Peterson three innings four runs all earned and let's see Peterson allowed just two hits but walked five and hit two batters the pitch right there for a strike on the outside corner at the knees oh and one to T money Heading with an open stance for the right side. The offering and the curveball is popped up right over the mound. And that's going to drop in front of Sturdivant. And it's going to be a base hit. Wow. I mean, it was fisted. It only went about 20 feet in the air. And it dropped. And the second baseman, Chambliss, and the shortstop Sturdivant charged. And it just sat there. 
And we've had some odd base hits in this game. That's another one of them. So the bead diggers pick up their fourth hit. I mean, there was not much altitude on that ball at all. Here's Caleb Cox. And Jacob Brummel's pitching into some very bad luck right now. Cox is grounded out and hit into a fielder's choice. He is 0 for 2. The line score goes like this. Six runs on four hits for Brush. Four runs on three hits for St. Mary's. Anytime you have more runs than hits, it's a product of other issues. The pitch up and away. One ball and no strikes. St. Mary's with 13 wins during the regular season. The Bee Diggers had 10. And really, once that ball dropped, there was no play. These middle infield was charging 1-0. That's upstairs. 2-0 to Cox. Although Brown has not received much defensive support at all, he did get himself into trouble with a couple of walks which contributed to loading the bases there in the fourth inning. Cox awaits the pitch. And the 2-0. Very high and away. 3-0. You got this, Jacob. Here to Jacob, from Jacob Brummel to Caleb Cox. Brush trailed one to nothing until they scored six runs on one hit in the fourth inning. 3-0 pitch, that's on the outside corner for a strike with a fastball. It is three and one. The left-handed hitting second baseman steps in for the B-Diggers. The stretch, throw back to first, back in standing is Mount. Cox will dig back in. With a three ball, one strike count. Brahma looking back. And runner going. Fouled runner bluffing actually fouled out of play is three and two. Well, let's see if Kevin Fergus is going to send Mount. Trying to get a little bit more aggressive here. Three balls and two strikes. With nobody out in the top of the fifth inning, the beat diggers are the visiting team, so they have to be cognizant of that. And the offering swung on and fouled off to the left and headed out of play, giving chase over there to third and not. But it is over the fence and out of play. It remains at 3-2. and two. And that was pitch number 78 for Brummel. Keep in mind the limit is at 110. Unless you're under 110. When you barely under 110, you could complete the number of pitches to a hitter and then go over that mark. But you cannot begin a new sequence once you're at 110. Or above, obviously. Throw back to first, back in standing as Mount. And the game has really moved slowly here. Well, we were zipping along through three, and then all of a sudden, snail's pace. This is easily going to be a two-and-a-half-hour game. Throw back to first, and he nearly threw it away. Haynes had to stretch out to his right there. Three balls and two strikes to Caleb Cox. Mount stretches out that lead to about three steps. And the pitch swung on and popped foul and out of play, but Cox is battling. That's the seventh pitch of the at bat there. And again, Fort Morgan will be playing momentarily on B106 and B106.com in the district championship game at Palisade. The offering, and that is upstairs, and it's a walk to Caleb Cox. That's a great plate appearance by Caleb. First and second for Ben Brown. The Beat Diggers are trying to get those runs back. That they relinquished in the bottom of the fourth inning. Ben Brown struck out and then walked. Rommel has thrown 80 pitches. So he's down to 30 plus at the most. If he gets through this inning fairly unscathed, he could go another. But it would be hard for to imagine that he would last into the seventh. Okay. 
So here we go, first and second here for Ben Brown. Rush with a 6-4 to four lead in the top of the fifth inning from Peak to Peak High School in Lafayette. Peak to Peak won earlier today, 6-2 to two over Platte Valley, and they await the winner of this game. Rush is the three seed out of this region. St. Mary's the two seed, which would amount to a, a 12 versus 21 matchup, with Brush being the 21 if you looked at the overall bracket. Stretch by Brummel, and the pitch. That's a fastball for a strike on the outside corner at the knees. It's 0-1. Brown's a very good hitter the other way. If he can find a spot into right field, he can score mount. Squaring the bunt. See if he goes through with that. Brummel delivers, and he lays it down beautifully up the third base side. Brummel sets. Now he waits for the throw to first. High and late. That should be late. Yep. The second baseman went over to cover. Now yeah, we'll call that a base hit. Late covering over there. Brummel had to wait to get rid of it, so we'll give him the bunt single. Yeah, it was close, but... Brummel had to wait on that one because there was nobody covering first at that point. So we'll score. It. Here's Ryan Dunker. He's up there with the bases loaded for the second time in as many innings. He has popped out and reached on an error. He has driven in a run. There's the stretch and the offering. Swing and a miss on a bender. Diving down in the zone, it's 0-1. Such a nicely executed bunt that Haynes had to come in and go back. And the offering. Swung on, driven in the air to deep left field. And Josh White to his left is going to make the catch. Mount will tag. The throw towards the plate is going to go all the way through. And the other runners trying to move up the slide to second. And in there on the back end is Ben Brown. So it's a sack fly for Dunker. Moving to third was Cox and Brown to second. Mount scoring. It's 7-4 to four beat diggers. Here is Gunnar Guzman. So Brush has one run back and some outstanding base running there. And I think White probably is thinking now that he should have gone to third because you have two more runners in scoring position. And Brummel op operates out of the stretch with one out. On, the B-Diggers in this inning have a flare over the pitcher, a bunt down the third baseline, a walk and a sack fly. That's it. And the offering. And the curveball is laced into the left center field gap for a base hit. Cox will score. Brown is around third. And he is going to score on the two-run single by Gunnar Guzman. Gunnar now with three RBIs in the game. And the B-Diggers have three across in the fifth inning and lead 9-4. to four. And he saw that pitch up in the zone, that little hanger. And Colin Cole will step in. Cole has struck out looking and grounded out. He's 0 for 2. Now the district championship game was slated to start like right around now, but this game won't finish for a while. And still lots of baseball to be played in the fifth inning. The stretch by Brummel. And the offering. Swung on and fouled. Right off the umpire. It's 0-1. Here to Cole. And we are straight up. Straight up now at 3 o'clock. This is 10-10 KSIR. Brush, Fort Morgan, Marino. And on the World Wide Web at KSIR.com. I'm John Beltran in a Class 3A district semifinal from Peak to Peak High School in Lafayette. Where the Brush Bee Diggers lead the St. Mary's Pirates 9-4 in the fifth inning. And I'm not sure if we have an equipment or medical issue over there. Yeah, I think the umpire needs some water, the home plate umpire. Oh, he took that one pretty hard <laughs> off the face mask, so he's just trying to recover a little bit. I mean, the first game between 
peak to peak in Pot Valley. That one went about 215. This one already is sitting at an hour 46. All right, so Cole up there with a no ball, one strike count. Guzman off of first, the stretch. Scoring to bunt, and he lays it down beautifully up the first base side. Brummel over there, and he gloves it, but then it's off his glove, and Cole's going to beat it out. Couldn't glove it completely, just went off his glove. What an excellent bunt. Earlier by Brown, and this one by Cole. Bee Diggers have two bunt singles in the inning. And they are playing outstanding small ball here. Just one ball hit out of the infield. It was by Guzman. And I think that's going to be it for Brummel. Again, he pitched into some very hard luck in this frame. With the Bee Diggers up 9-4. to four, Two on and one out in the fifth inning. We'll have a pitching change. So let's... Sasha Obermeyer is the new pitcher. And a foul ball is a lefty pitching to Justin Griffith, who's 0 for 3. Popped out, grounded out, and reached on an error. He is sitting at 0 for 3. Guzman at second, Cole at first, or check that. That's the courtesy runner. That's Nick Well on the pitch. And that is upstairs. One ball and one strike. The Bay Diggers have three across in the frame, getting a two-run single from Guzman. Outside, down, and away off the glove of English, but he tracks it down, no advance. Brummel is now at short. And, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Let's keep it here. The stretch. And the offering. Swung on and chopped foul up the first base side. Two balls and two strikes here to Griffith. Bay Diggers have seven hits in the game, but in this inning, they have three that haven't left the infield. A couple of nice bunts. And that little flare hit by Mount to lead off the frame over the pitcher, Brummel, the, the pitcher that was on the mound at that point. Two balls and two strikes. There's the stretch. And the offering. Swung on and foul back. One with that breaking ball. Count remains at two and two. Let's see if everything else remains the same. In the infield, yes, Sturdivan is now at second. With Brummel at short. Obermeyer delivers. That is a ball inside. Boy, that barely missed the corner. Three and two. That was close. Three balls and two strikes. Runners take their leads. And the offering swung on and popped up. And that one is headed out of play. Remains at three and two. Yeah, I think this district championship game is not going to start till after four. We're only in the top of the fifth inning and the Bay Diggers with a nine to four lead. Here's the stretch and the offering. Swung on, that ball is grounded into right field for a base hit. Guzman is around third. He's being sent home. The throw to the plate is going to be cut off. It's an RBI single for Justin Griffith, his first hit of the game. And the bead diggers have played it four in the fifth inning and now lead 10 to four. All right, advancing to second there was Wellen. Jaron Peterson has struck out, walked, and hit an RBI triple in that six-run fourth inning. The Bay Diggers have scored 10 runs in the last inning plus. Runners take their leads. Here's the stretch and the offering, and that's down and in with a changeup. Ball briefly got away, but Wellen back to second. I don't think we have to worry about lights, but there are no lights here at peak to peak. We should have 
four and a half hours of daylight left. And again, I'm only questioning that because of the length of this game. One ball, no strikes. The pitch, that's inside. 2-0. and oh. Here from Sasha Obermeyer. DJ English out there to have a conversation with his pitcher. Brush had broken it open with six runs in the fourth inning. Then it became a 6-4 to four game, but the B-Diggers are coming through here again in the fifth. Peterson awaits the 2-0. Here it is. And he takes a changeup for a strike on the outside corner. Two balls and one strike. Well and off of second, Griffith at first. And the pitch. And the curveball is a strike on the inside corner. Two and two. Ryan Fergus waits to hit next. At the belt is Obermeyer. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled on the breaking ball to the screen. Remains at two and two. All these beat digger runs brought to you by Western Engineering Consultants providing civil engineering services for aviation, municipal, commercial, and residential clients in Colorado. Western Engineering Consultants, and that is in the dirt. It's three and two. The first beat digger run was driven in by Ryan Dunker, and they've kept it going since then. Peterson awaits the payoff pitch. Here it is. Swung on and grounded right side, and that's going to hit off the helmets of Griffith. That scored a base hit. That's the way it scores in the book, but Griffith is out. And Justin was trying to avoid that baseball. But he's going to be out. And give Matt Haynes the first baseman. He will get the uh, put out. There's Ryan Fergus, who singled, popped out, and reached on an error. And if this game goes seven innings, Fergus would be the pitcher of record. Fergie digs in the stretch. And the offering. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball in the dirt. It's 0-1. No balls and one strike. Well, and it's second. Peterson at first. Well, and went back to second when the ball was when the ball hit Griffith, and that's a strike. Wow, that was up in the zone. The count is sitting at zero and two. The stretch and the pitch. Fastball is high. One ball and two strikes. The Bay Digger scored six in the fourth. They've got four so far here in the fifth with two down and two on. The left hander Obermeyer gets a sign from English. He's been busy back there for the last couple of innings. And the offering swing and a miss on the off speed pitch, and Fergus goes down. The Bead Diggers, though, score four runs on six hits, no errors, and two men left. Let's head to the bottom of the fifth inning. The Bead Diggers lead St. Mary's in this 3A district semifinal 10 to 4 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Ryan Fergus steps to the hill here for his first full inning of work in the fifth inning. The Bead Diggers 10, the St. Mary's Pirates 4 in this 3A district semifinal. Game has had everything. A bunch of walks, a bunch of misplays here. Bee Diggers have just one error, but they had makeable plays that probably should have prevented them from allowing St. Mary's to score even more, especially in that three run fourth inning. Here is Michael Ott. Ott bunted into a double play and walked. 
Close the book on Jacob Brummel. Four and a third innings. Allowed ten runs, six earned. Gave up seven hits. Four strikeouts and four walks. Pitch from Fergus. That's a fastball for a strike down the middle at the knees. It's 0-1. 7, 8, and 9 for St. Mary. Swing and a miss and a changeup. Oh, he pulled the string beautifully. It's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. Wine and pitch. Swing and a miss on another changeup. There's one down. Wow. I mean, pulled the string very nicely. One down for Seth Chambliss, who's grounded out and singled. Well, if we could get more out of that from Fergus, he could really speed up this game. Swung on and foul back. He's one of those rhythm pitchers. Once he gets going, it's really hard to stop him. No balls and one strike. Wine and offering. And that's over, but low. One and one. St. Mary's out of Colorado Springs, the pitch. That is over again, but low, and looked like it hit the corner, but it was below the knees. Two balls and one strike. One down, and the base is empty at the bottom of the fifth inning. Brush 10, St. Mary's 4, the pitch. Up and in. 3-1. and one. This game has hit the two-hour mark. And a 3-1 pitch. And they walked him. Well, that'll send up Ryan Combs, who struck out and was hit by a pitch. He's 0 for 1. B Diggers at double play depth. All right, Fergus looks in. And the pitch. That's a strike with a fastball in the outer half. Thigh high, it's 0-1. It's been a rough stretch for Brush here. Eight walks in the game. They haven't done much of that this season. And is outside. The count is leveled at 1-1. One one. They've also hit a couple of batters. But they have a 10-4 lead in the bottom of the fifth inning. And that pitch is upstairs. And Evergreen has pulled the upset of Palisade, three to two. So Fort Morgan taking on Evergreen coming up here on B106 and B106.com for the uh, district title in Palisade. And the pitch, that is high. Come on, Ryan. Three and one. Can't defend a walk. Wow. Three balls and one strike. I mean, this is the number nine hitter, and that is on the outside corner for a strike. Three and two, although Combs has hit the ball well this year, but you got to give something to him. Three and two. The stretch by Fergus. And the pitch way outside. Nine walks issued by Brush pitching. Well, let's hope if they get by St. Mary's that T. Bunny's on his game. Peterson was really good for a couple of innings, and that was it. And Fergus has already walked four in the game. The pitch, breaking ball is upstairs. So after walking a hitter, he begins third event there with a breaking ball. And the offering, and that is on the outside corner for a strike with a fastball. 0 for 2 is Turtevant. He grounded out, walked, and popped out. At second is Chambliss. Combs at first. One down in the fifth. 10 to 4. Brush over St. Mary's. The pitch. Swing! And a miss. On a, took something off it above the letters. It's 1 and 2. I mean, one thing Fergus does very well is pitch out of trouble. Now, sometimes puts himself in trouble, but he knows how to pitch out of it. Long pause. And the pitch. Swung on and foul back. Count remains at one and two.
Turn to bat. On deck is Obermeyer. Fergie gets the sign. And the offering swung on. That is popped up. Down the third base side, Gunnar Guzman in fair territory, backs up. The ball is going to drop, picked up by Mount, throws to third, and it's off of Fergus's glove. Or is the infield fly called? I think the infield fly, was that called for the out? Yep, the infield fly was called for the out, so there's two down, but... but let's see, the infield fly is called, but the B-diggers... I mean, that's it. I mean, I don't care if the infield fly was called. That's just terrible defense by Brush. They got a – that is tough to watch. I mean, we're in a playoff situation now. Some discussion out there. Runners back to first and second on the infield fly. So there's two down. Here's Obermeyer. They got to, I mean, if they win this game, let's see if they're going to, they might allow those two runners to advance. Let's see now. Are the runners, yep. I think the runners are going to advance. But there are two down. I've seen, we've seen plays today on both sides that have baffled me. Obermeyer has reached on an air, struck out, and singled. Yeah, Guzman backed up, but the ball was still on the clay part of the field. And then Mount picked it up. Fergus went to cover. It was a low throw. It was off his glove for the force, but it didn't matter. However, had he caught it and applied a tag, that would have been a double play based on the infield fly rule. The force out wouldn't have meant meant nothing there was no force once it's called an infield fly but that is the correct ruling the runner should be at second and third they're allowed to advance once the infield fly is called and had that been caught it well there wouldn't have been a double play the runners were were already next to their own bases so here we go here's obermeyer one for three in the game. The stretch by Fergus. And the pitch. Swung on and grounded left side. And Guzman plays it off his glove. And then he cannot pick it up. And safe is going to be Obermeyer. Chambla scores as an error on Guzman. Combs to third. It's now 10 to five. That took a Sunday hop. Should have had it. That's an unearned run. And there's Jacob Brummel, who reached in a fielder's choice and walked twice. I mean, this is just really sloppy baseball. And the pitch, way outside with a fastball. One ball and no strikes. Fergie. The runners at the corners delivers. Swung on and hit. In the air, down the left side. Peterson along the line into foul territory. Makes the running catch. And St. Mary's is held to a run in the bottom of the fifth inning. They do it on one air. There were no hits and two men left. St. Mary's is stranded 10 in the game as we go to the sixth inning. Brush 10, St. Mary's 5 on 10-10 KSIR and KSIR.com. 10 to the sixth inning. Had a gorgeous day here in... Lafayette, unfortunately, the baseball has not matched the level of baseball by both teams, even though the B-Diggers are up 10-5, to has really been lacking. Here's Trent Mount against the left-hander, Sasha Obermeyer. Here's the stretch and the offering. Swung on and grounded right back to the mound, and to his left, the underhand toss by Obermeyer. Mount is out number one. And Obermeyer's got a lot of good off-speed stuff. Caleb Cox is grounded out, hit into a fielder's choice, and walked. He steps in the stretch and the pitch, and that changeup is down and away. 
One ball and no strikes. Fort Morgan and Evergreen will start at 4 o'clock more than likely on B106 and B106.com. This will be a later start for Brush if they hold on. Swung on and fouled back. On that changeup thrown by Obermeyer, they still have six outs to go with a 10-5 to lead over St. Mary's in this 3A district semifinal. One ball and one strike. And the offering. And that is a breaking ball that drops in there for a strike on the outer half. It's one and two. Ten runs on nine hits for Brush. Five runs on three hits for the Pirates. Curveball swung on in line towards center field. And a dive. And the ball is off the glove of Combs. It'll be a base hit. He laid out for that. Nearly made a great play. But it's a base hit for Caleb Cox. And the Beat Diggers are now in the double-digit hit column. And Ben Brown has struck out, swinging, walked, and bunt. The bunt was a base hit. Bay Diggers have had base runners in most innings, even though they were shut down in the first three. Brown awaits the pitch. Here it is. And the changeup is a ball. Oh, it's a strike. There you go. Missed that one. On the outside corner, no balls and one strike. Short lead at first for Cox. The left-hander, Obermeyer, delivers. Swing and a miss. On the inner half, put something behind that one. It's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. One on, one out. 10-5 to five brush over St. Mary's in the top of the sixth inning. The offering. That is a call, strike three. That dropped in there beautifully. Brown strikes out. Two down for Dunker, who's popped out, reached on an air, and then delivered a sacrifice. Flies over two. Let's see the bead diggers in this game. Struck out, I think, five times. Yep, not bad. Up and in. With the all-speed, one ball and no strikes. With the way this game has gone, Rush does not have this sealed at all. This is still a game. One ball and no strikes. Donker awaits the pitch. Swung on and popped up. And that is headed out of play on the right side. One and one. Yeah, sometimes long games are good games, not this one. It's been two different games. A pitcher's duel through three innings. Then it turned into a mess after that. Walks, hit batsmen, errors, misplays that were scored hits. The pitch, swinging a miss on a ball in the dirt, skips away to second is Cox. Dunker has an RBI opportunity, but he got to swing at the right pitch. One ball and two strikes. That'll be scored a wild pitch on Obermeyer. The Bay Diggers are looking to get back the run that they gave up in the bottom of the fifth inning. With two down. Obermeyer, lots of good off-speed stuff with a change up on the breaking ball. The offering swung on and tat foul up the third base side. Last year, the Bay Diggers advanced to the district championship game where they lost to Ken Denver 11-1 in Englewood after they beat Buena Vista pretty handily a stretch and a pitch down and in again on the off speed it's two and two yeah I think the earliest the earliest the district slash regional title game will start is 430 Two and two. It's the dunker. Swung on and fouled straight back. We'll do it again with Cox at second. And a two ball, two strike count to the junior first baseman, Ryan Dunker. English lays down the sign. It's a nice lead by Cox. And the offering. And that is upstairs with a bender. That didn't break enough. Good take there by Dunker. 
This will be the eighth pitch of the plate appearance. Three and two to Dunker. And the offering. And that's up and away with a changeup. He walks. We've seen a couple of good ones like that. One from Caleb Cox, the other from Dunker. Here's Guzman. Guzman just delivered a two-run single. Guzman has driven in three. His ground out a second time up, produced a run. The stretch. Gunner awaits, and that's upstairs with a fastball, one ball and no strikes. If either team generates a big rally, this could turn into a three-hour game. Haven't had one of those in a while. And the longest game we had this year was about close to three hours, but that would be an extra inning win or loss, I should say, to Sterling. Meanwhile, Sterling will be playing Lamar on KPMX and KPMX.com. Popped up on the changeup. The shortstop, Brummel, three steps into the grass, makes the grab. And the B-Diggers do not score in the sixth inning. One hit for Brush. They strand two. We head to the bottom of the sixth inning in this 3A district semifinal. It's Brush 10, St. Mary's 5 on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. 10 to 5 Brush as we head to the bottom of the sixth inning in this 3A district semifinal. And again, as I mentioned earlier, Sterling will take on Lamar on 105.7 KPMX and KPMX.com. And that district championship game. Bottom of the sixth. And here is TJ English. Wine in the pitch. That changeup is low. English is grounded into a fielder's choice, been hit by a pitch and walked. He is 0 for 1. And the offering. Low again, 2 and 0. Two balls and no strikes in the pitch. Oh, he bounced it in there. 3 and 0. Yeah, I, I am a little surprised the pitching has been this bad for Brush. I know they have the lead, but I mean, this is just unacceptable in a playoff game. That's a strike on the inside corner. Peterson walked five and had two batters. Fergus has walked four. He's pitched out of trouble. 3-1 pitch. Swung on and driven on the air towards left field. Peterson makes the catch on that line drive. Nice job, though. I'll give Fergus some credit for battling back. And there's one down. That ball was hit hard. But again, Fergie, 28 strikes, 23 balls. You need much better ratio than that. There's Josh White, who singled, walked, and popped out. He has one for two. The B Diggers are five outs away the pitch, and the breaking ball is a beauty down the middle at the knees. That's that's the thing with Fergie. He'll throw three or four pitches in a row that you say to yourself, man, this kid, you can't touch him. He's in a rhythm, and then all of a sudden he throws three or four that don't find the strike zone. The pitch, the changeup bounces in. One ball and one strike. This entire starting staff's got a lot of talent. And they've been consistent for the most part, but not today. Fergus ready. Wine in the 1-1. Swing and a miss on a changeup down and into White. It was officially one for two. Singled, walked, and popped out. I got to check and see if St. Mary's has been retired in order. The offering. Curveball is way inside. Let's see. The home scorecard indicates that there have been no one, two, three innings by any brush pitcher. And the offering swung on and popped up down the third base side. Cole, the catcher, gives chase, and he makes the basket catch for the out. Yeah, he didn't have time to turn that glove the other way, so he made the basket catch, and there's two down.
Two down here in the sixth. And here is Matt Haynes. Haynes has walked, grounded out, and struck out looking. Fergie ready. And the pitch. Curveball is upstairs. St. Mary sent four to the plate in the first inning. And four in the second. Outside of that, they batted a lot more. And that's a fastball down the middle for a strike. Count levels at one and one. Ten to five brush. With two down in the bottom of the sixth inning. And the pitch swung on and popped up into right field. Carson Rule is back, still going back, still near the fence. And that ball's going to drop in there. It'll be a two-out double for Haynes. And Rule got a late jump on that ball. A pretty late jump on that one, but it's a straight-up double. He didn't think it was hit that deep. And for St. Mary's, that's their fourth hit of the game. Here's Michael Lott. It was 0 for 2. He bunted into a double play, walked and struck out. Even though the B-Diggers unofficially have two errors in the game, their defense has been uh, pretty inconsistent, the stretch. And the pitch. Fastball is high. One ball and no strikes. You get this guy out, then you deal with the 8, 9, and 1 hitters in the 7th. And Fergus looks back. The pitch. That's a strike on the outside corner with a fastball. Count levels at one and one. Here to the number seven hitter, Michael Ott. The pitch. Swung on and lifted shallow left field. That should drop for a base hit. It does in front of Peterson. Haynes will be held up at third. Second hit of the inning. Not hit hard, but hit in the perfect spot. That'll extend the inning for Seth Chambliss, who's grounded out, singled, and walked. He's one for two. Well, we have two 24s on the roster. I'm not sure who the courtesy runner is. But I'm guessing that's going to be Joseph Sabich. Just a guess. All right, so here we go. Chambliss will step in. B-Diggers trying to keep St. Mary's off the board. It was one nothing St. Mary's after three. B-Diggers scored six in the fourth. St. Mary's counter with three in the bottom half. And then Brush scored four in the fifth, and St. Mary's one in the bottom of the fifth. Neither team has scored yet in the sixth inning. All right, so Chambliss about to step in. Now that they're ironing out the courtesy runner at first between Bill Percy, the head coach, and the home plate umpire. That gives me a chance to tell you that if you're looking to find insurance for your car, home, or even for you, in Meyer Phillips Insurance is locations in Brush at Fort Morgan, and they can help you with your home, car, health, or life insurance questions or provide a quote in Meyer Phillips Insurance. All right, so Fergus back on the mound. And, oh, boy. Now we have another delay. An explanation from home plate umpire to Coach Kevin Fergus. Not sure about what. It was just a substitution there. Again, the line score goes like this. Ten runs, ten hits, two errors, seven left on base for Brush. Five runs, five hits, three errors, and ten left on base for St. Mary's. We're only in the bottom of the sixth inning in a game that is approaching the two-and-a-half-hour mark. Fergus delivers. Down and away. One ball and no strikes. Peak to peak awaits the winner of this one. It was a scheduled 3 o'clock start. We'll be lucky to start before 4.30. And the offering. Change up a strike down the middle. It's one and one. And Fergus has already thrown 64 pitches. So he doesn't have much left for today. 
It's going to be up to Mountain Dunker for the Bee Diggers to get to the state tournament if they get by this one. And the offering, and that is a little bit high. Ball two, strike one. Let's see. Peterson, before he was pulled, threw 74 pitches. So he's got something left in the tank. The offering swung on and popped up along the right field line. That could be trouble, and Cox dives. It's going to drop for a base hit. A run's going to score, and save it to third. It's a Texas lead single for Seth Chambliss. St. Mary's now trails brush 10-6. to I mean, that was placed in the perfect spot. Nothing any do there. There's Ryan Combs, who struck out, was hit by a pitch, and walked. Again, this is still a game here. Brush is a four-run lead, but certainly not a safe one. Stretch by Fergus. All this damage with two out the pitch. Breaking ball is fouled straight back. Got a piece of the catcher call, the umpire. No balls and one strike. I mean, had he walked out there and dropped it with his hand, it could have been any better. Oh, and one here to Ryan Combs. Yeah, a double and two singles after two are down. First and third with two down. The 0 1 pitch swung on. That has popped up into foul territory, but out of play up the right side. And it's 0 and 2. He might go with that change up here. Try to really keep this hitter off balance. A changeup might suffice very nicely here. No balls and two strikes to Ryan Combs. And the offering. Runner goes to second. The throw's going to go all the way through. And it gets loose over there. And on the back end, taking off for home is Joseph Sabich. It's now 10-7. to Well, they threw all the way through, but there was no cutoff there. So it's a double steal. Yeah, and yeah, no, I don't know what's happening here. I'm totally dumbfounded by some of these plays, decisions. One and two. Come on, Fergie, let's get out of this here. And the pitch, and the breaking balls are called strike three on the inside corner. And thank God that one is done. However, St. Mary scores two runs on three hits. No errors and a man left. Let's head to the seventh in this 3A district semifinal. The Bee Diggers 10, the St. Mary's Pirates 7 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the seventh inning in this 3A district semifinal. 10 to 7 brush over St. Mary's. It'll be Colin Cole, Justin Griffith, and Jaron Peterson against the left-hander Sasha Obermeyer. Cole is struck out, grounded out, and had a bunt single. The Bay Diggers have 10 hits of the game. St. Mary's with six, five combined errors. The teams have stranded 18 combined, 11 for St. Mary's, seven for Brush. And the changeup is a strike down the middle. It's 0-1. Ryan Fergus will be the pitcher of record for Brush. Peterson did not go long enough. St. Mary's has cut the lead in half after it was 10-4. The offering and the curveball drops in for a strike. Letter high, it's 0-2. No balls and two strikes. The stretch. Pitch to Cole. Called strike three on the breaking ball on the outside corner. There's one down. And Obermeyer's getting on a little bit of a roll here. He's retired five of the last seven beat diggers. Griffith is one for four with an RBI. And the pitch swung on line down the right field line for a base hit. Griffith now at two for five. And the Bee Diggers pick up their 11th hit of the game. Here's Peterson who struck out, walked, tripled and singled. This triple drove in a run in the six-run fourth inning. The Bay Diggers are looking for some insurance runs, even though they lead by three. And with 17 runs on the board, 
can never have too many. 10 by Brush, 7 by St. Mary's. And the offering. Curveball is a strike. That's the high strike at the letters at 0-1. Peterson didn't like it, but that pitch is being called a strike every time. Big gap in right center where Peterson hit his triple in the third inning. Make it the fourth. Griffith leads. Swung on line. Base it into right field. Griffith got a late jump. Had to make sure the ball got into right field so he can only advance to second. Now the B-Diggers have something brewing here for Ryan Fergus, who has singled, popped out, reached on an air, and struck out swinging against this left-hander. Huge at bat here for Fergie with T-Money on deck. The stretch by Obermeyer. And the pitch. That's a breaking ball that drops in for a strike on the outer half at the knees. It's 0-1. Griffith at second. Peterson leads off of first. One out in the seventh. 10-7 B-Diggers. With a winner to take on St. Mary's. And the pitch squaring to Bunt. And he lays it down foul. Try to go up the third base side. Now it's 0-2. Good idea. B-Diggers have had two outstanding bunts in this game. But no balls and two strikes. Fergus back in the box. Runners with their advantages. And the pitch. Swung on and fouled up the third base side on the off speed. This already feels like a doubleheader. We're at the two hour and 35 minute mark here in the seventh. No balls and two strikes to Fergie. Watch out for all the off speed stuff here. Obermeyer gets a sign from English. And the pitch. And that bounces in and skips away. Griffith the third. The throw's going to be low. And Griffith is in there off the wild pitch. Into second is Peterson. All right, now let's see if the B-Diggers can capitalize. One ball and two strikes. You got two of the best hitters coming up here. And Fergus at the plate and Mount on deck with two in scoring position. And one out in the final frame. Fergus awaits. And the offering. And that is upstairs. Boy, that was tailing away. And Ryan took it for a ball. Two and two. Again, English laying down the sign. You're going to see something off speed. Pitch to Fergie. Swing and a miss and a curveball. Throw to third. Griffith back in diving safely. Fergus strikes out. There's two down. There's Trent Mount. Who struck out, walked, had that single and that flare over the pitcher, and then grounded out. Well, this is his time. 22 RBIs for Mount this season. 23 and 24 would be nice for a five-run lead. See if he can do it right now. Obermeyer stretches. And the pitch. Swung on and grounded left side. Takes a funny hop, but fielded the throw to first will be in time as the play was made by Michael Lott. And the B-Diggers are held off the scoreboard in the top of the seventh inning. No runs for Brush on two hits, no errors, and two men left. We head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The B-Diggers are three outs away as they lead St. Mary's 10-7 on 1010 KSIR and KSIR.com. Let's head to the bottom of the seventh inning. The Beat Diggers with a 10 to 7 lead, but they'll have to deal with Gavin Sturdivant. 0 for 3. It's grounded out, popped out, walked, and hit into an infield fly. Ryan Fergus going for the win here for Brush. And the pitch swung on and grounded off of Fergus's glove up the middle into center field for a base hit. Sturdivant with his first hit of the game. For St. Mary's, that's their seventh. And the tying run is on deck. 
Sasha Obermeyer has raced on two errors, struck out swinging and singled. He is one for four. The stretch and the pitch. That's a fastball on, well, I guess it's inside. I don't know. I know it was tailing in, but that's been called a strike to a right-handed hitter. One ball and no strikes. Fergus looks in, and the offering. That changeup is in the dirt. It's 2-0. and oh. And you've got one of the best hitters coming up in Jacob Brummel. St. Mary's has plenty of life left. 2-0 pitch to Obermeyer. That's a strike with a fastball on the outside half. Thigh high, it's 2-1. and one. The Bay Diggers had leads of 6-1 to one and 10-4. to four. It's now 10-7 to seven the pitch. Swung on and popped up into right field. Carson Rule coming in. Still coming, makes the two-handed grab for the out. Obermeyer's retired. And retreating the first is Sturdivan for Jacob Brummel. Grounded into a 6-4 fielder's choice. Walked twice and popped to left. He is 0 for 2. The stretch and a pitch. Fastball is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. Feels like a start for Fergus. That was pitch number 76. We'll have a brief post-game show. B Diggers win, then we'll go back to ESPN. And that fastball is up and in, 2-0. Then oh. we'll have the championship game. But there's still two outs away. These are two difficult outs to get. Two balls and no strikes. Short lead at first for Sturdivant. And the pitch. High with a fastball, 3-0. Brummel will be taking the tying run's going to come to the plate if Brummel reaches. That's a strike on the inside corner with a fastball, three and one. Three balls and one strike. Throw back to first and back in diving is Turtevant. Bay Digger pitchers have really battled this game. 3 1 pitch. Swinging a foul at the plate. 3 and 2. One on, one out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rush 10, St. Mary 7. Pete's Farmers Cooperative has been in business since 1915. Still the small town company that cares about each of their individual customers. See them for all your propane, fuel, and farm needs. Pete's Farmers Cooperative. Three balls, two strikes. Colin Cole lays down the sign. And the pitch. And that is a cold strike three on the outside corner with a fastball. And there's two down in the seventh. Well, that was a money pitch there by Fergus. As Brummel goes down, and here's T.J. English. Grounded into a fielder's choice, hit by a pitch. Walked and lined out. He is 0 for 2. Laying down the sign is Cole. And the offering. Low with a changeup. Oh, that's a huge out recorded by Fergus after he fell behind 3-0 in the count. One ball and no strikes. And the offering. That's upstairs. 2-0. and oh. Fergus just recorded his third strikeout. And Fergus has thrown 83 pitches. 13 more than the starter, Peterson. Two balls and no strikes to English. With two down in the seventh. And the pitch up and away. Ryan's not going to make it easy. 3-0. and oh. Josh White waits on deck. 3-0 pitch. 
That's right there for a strike. On the outer half. And Cole is tired back there. He's not even throwing it accurately towards the pitcher now. It's been 155 pitches thrown in his direction. Some in the dirt. A lot out of the strike zone. 3-1. Swung on line towards center field. Justin Griffiths goes back. Still going. He makes the catch. And the brush bead diggers have eliminated St. Mary's in this 3A district semifinal. Winning the game by a score of 10 to 7. We'll take a three minute break and we'll wrap it up after this as the Bee Diggers advance to the district championship game in Lafayette right here on 1010KSIR and KSIR.com. Bee Digger post game show brought to, you, brought to you by Mr. D's Ace Home Center with locations to serve you better in Sterling Brush and Fort Morgan. Your headquarters for all your home farm and ranch supplies from plumbing to feed, Mr. D's Ace Home Center. The Bee Diggers in this 3A district semifinal eliminate St. Mary's 10 to 7. 10 runs on 12 hits, 2 airs, 9 left on base for Brush. 7 runs, 7 hits, 3 airs, 12 left on base for St. Mary's. The winning pitcher in relief was Ryan Fergus. The loss to Jake Hummel. Time of the game, 2 hours and 44 minutes. And we thought for a while that we were going to be locked into a pitcher's duel. It was scoreless in the bottom of the third inning. Josh White was walked with the bases loaded as St. Mary's took a 1-0 lead. But back came the Bee Diggers loading the bases in the fourth. And that set the stage for Ryan Dunker, who reached on an air. A run, two runs scored. Gave him one RBI in the play. Made it 2-1. Gunnar Guzman with a ground out. Made it 3-1. Then it became 4-1 when Justin Griffith reached on a two-out air. Jaron Peterson had an RBI triple, making it 5-1. to one. And then Ryan Fergus reached on the third air of the inning by St. Mary's, but they came back as they were issued two bases loaded walks in a three-run bottom of the fourth inning as Fergus replaced Peterson, making it 6-4. to four. And then the Bead Diggers supposedly broke it open in the fifth inning as they had a sack fly from Ryan Dunker, a two-run single from Gunnar Guzman, making it 9-4, to four, RBI single from Justin Griffith. It was 10-4 to four at that point, but St. Mary's did not go away. As Sasha Obermeyer reached on an air in the fifth inning, making it 10 to 5. And then in the bottom of the sixth inning, St. Mary's scored a couple of more runs. Seth Chambliss had an RBI single. And then a double steal of Joseph Sabich scored, but that was it. St. Mary's did not score any more. And the Bee Diggers picked up their 11th win of the year in advance to the district championship game. Excellent year, though, for St. Mary's at 13 and 7. But the Bee Diggers win the game 10 to 7. Time for the Bee Digger player of the game. Brought to you by Cargill Beef. Committed to feeding the world in a responsible way by reducing environmental impact and improving products and processes. Learn about Cargill's story of commitment at Cargill.com. Well, Gunnar Guzman had three of the seven ribbies for Brush, so I'll give him the player of the game. Peterson did have three hits, but uh, we're trying to spread it around as much as possible. Obviously, a big team win, but Gunnar Guzman with the three RBIs, the B Digger player of the game. They will take on peak to peak. First pitch should be in the next 30 to 35 minutes. So let's say 440, 445. And we'll have it for you right here on KSIR and KSIR.com. Until then, we'll send it over to ESPN Radio and come back in the next 30 to 35 minutes for the district championship game from Lafayette between the B Diggers and the peak to peak Pumas. On 1010 KSIR, as the Bee Diggers beat St. Mary's 10-7 and KSIR.com.